hope you are doing good tonight. Um, it's just a Saturday night. I'm hanging out with my crystals and my mystical books, and I thought I would say hello to you guys and um, share something that's up for me this week. The concept of ego death is such an interesting one. Um, I wonder if you've come across it um, on your spiritual path. I know I have experienced what people refer to as ego death in meditation back when I was awakening originally. And um, I want to share a little bit about what that feels like and how it's a good thing, but also how it can become, how we can inadvertently make it bigger than it needs to be in our experience as intuitives and as mystics and sort of how to skillfully navigate the waters of ego death. Um, so I thought I would share a quick thought with you about that. Um, so just to start, ego death is basically, it's a form of, um, I think it's one of the, the summits of consciousness. It's a, a form of enlightenment. It's, it's not a mundane form of consciousness. So those of us who have not, um, had awakening spiritually where our consciousness has changed radically, we're probably living from a place of subjective personality, a place where we feel um, a personal sense of self, a small sense of self, like you feel really comfortable with your individual identity, like my individual identity is Virginia. But when you reach a place of ego death in your psyche, through meditation or through, some people reach it with psychedelics, some people reach it with shamanic drumming, some people reach it after years and years of meditation in an ashram. Um, everybody's experience of it is different. But once you reach that, you can, you can experience the part of yourself that's beyond just this individual self. And um, it's, it's the super conscious realm is what I describe it as. Um, but, but the mystical community, the spiritual community will call it ego death. I think Jung called it that, um, that or psychic death. And it's a special thing to achieve, honestly, in consciousness. Um, and it is one of the stepping stones in the spiritual unfolding process. I, I think I would describe it as it's a, it's a really important piece of the puzzle it is in a lot of ways your spiritual home it's where we're basically touching um god in us when we feel when we transcend the self and transcend the small identity which is your your self this lifetime we're making contact with um the higher realms the you know you're making contact with holiness you're making contact with your higher power probably it, in a lot of ways, is your spiritual home. It's your spiritual center. It's the place in you where we're all one. Um, it is the collective psyche. It's the collective consciousness. And it's a really special thing to achieve. Let me just say that. But what happens is um, there's such an emphasis on the unity consciousness, I'll call it, in um, the New Age and in spiritual community that... Um, once you've reached it, you can, if you're new to this world and new to this path, you, and you're new to that experience, which is totally natural um, because it's not a mundane form of consciousness, there's a tendency to overemphasize the, um, the importance of that state of consciousness. And there is a real temptation to reach for it more often than is necessary and to live from that state of consciousness. And what I want to just tell you guys, and I wish I had heard this when I was going through my awakening and experiencing ego death years and years ago, ages ago now, is um, that's an important place in yourself to touch every day in meditation. Um, but you get to live from your small self, from your individual self, your individual psyche. Um, and I've spoken about this on my blog where my Polarity Unity video um, and blog post is about um, the two poles of consciousness. One is um, honors the holiness of the self, self 
knowledge, self-expression, that means your small self. And the other one is unity consciousness. It's collective consciousness. It's um, a yin expression, a feminine expression, an all-embracing consciousness that makes room for all. So they're both holy, they're both valid. And I think in spiritual community, there's a lot, and in, in the new age too, there's a lot of emphasis on that yin principle and it can get a little bit imbalanced. So what happens if you live only from the depersonalized consciousness, the um, the ego death place in you, where you um, you have transcended your individual identity is you can really lose yourself. You can really lose the self in that in those waters of collective um, consciousness. And the reason that's a problem is because and my guides have told me this, and people I respect in the community, in the spiritual community, have said this to me. I just wish I had heard it earlier. Is you know your higher self, whatever term you want to use, source, God, um, your guides, your angels, your higher self wants you to be you. Your job in this life is to be you, your individual identity, and to bring in a lot of soul into this life, into this personality, um, bring that higher self into this smaller self, um, this individual self in this exact lifetime and live from a, a place of deep connection, presence and power. And um, it's important to have that collective um, consciousness, that unity state within you that makes you a powerful traveler in this life and a powerful intuitive, if that's what you're exploring. Um, but you don't want to let go of the self. You don't want to let go of the individual self. That's a holy expression too. And that's the yawn principle. That's the masculine principle. Um, it's the individuation, you know, um, pursuit of individual expression and it's holy. It's holy. It, and it's your piece of the puzzle in the collective. So you have to have a balance of these two forms of consciousness. So don't be tempted like many in the new age are to throw out, you know, who you were before your awakening. Does that make sense? Don't throw her away. You know, don't be tempted to override what's going on in your family life or in your community life or, you know, that little, a little bit of friction in your friendship with your, you know, in, with a friend that you've known since high school or whatever. That stuff is not less important than, you know, your timelines in other planetary spheres. That is a real temptation in the spiritual path, I think, is just like being so fixated on like, which archangel am I connected with? And what was my, what did my past life look like with the elementals? And, you know, like, what are my Syrian guides say this week? And for a long, for the longest, I'll be totally honest, for the longest, I reached for that, like, collective selflessness, like, ego death space in me because I thought it was higher. And frankly, I didn't have words for it, but I thought, in a way, there was a part of me that felt like it was superior, you know, that it was more spiritual. But the small self, I'm here to tell you, the small self is spiritual, too. They're both equal and um, important and they're working in tandem, right? So touch that unity consciousness as much as you can, you know, remind yourself we're all one on, on some level, we're all one. That's a really great, it's awesome when you can reach that state in yourself and you can live from that knowing, but it's not necessary to, to remember that we're all one. It's not necessary to throw out your individuality. It really isn't. It's a powerful place to be an individual from is knowing we're all one, but also that you are here as you, me as Virginia, you know, the one that likes books and animals and loves to write like that, my gifts, my soul expression, my core vibrational frequency, all of that is like my seat of power essentially. And I use that unity consciousness, that knowing that we're all one in God and in the higher realms that's what gives me strength. That's what gives me perspective. That's what gives me um, the ability to live from a, a fully embodied place. Yeah, so I thought I wanted, you know, I thought that would be helpful to anybody else who 
is has come across ego death to hear you know that they're both important you know yin yang both poles are always um kind of pulling at each other pulling at us and it's our job to kind of find the middle way so i hope you guys are having a great saturday night thanks for tuning in and i'll see you next time